It's been an incredibly busy day for you, but there's a lot of emphasis on the importance of MI300X, your latest AI accelerator. The, the technological difference vis-a-vis -vis the H100 NVIDIA's is uh, HBM3, high bandwidth memory. But what advantage does that give you in the immediate term against what is a clear market incumbent in the space? Yeah, well, first of all, um, it's great to be here. Thank you guys for uh, being on site and spending so much time with us today. Um, it's been a big, big day for AMD. We're so excited about, uh, first, the opportunity in AI is just absolutely exploding. Um, and then we're talking today about the launch of our MI300X, which is our, you know, let's call it the, the leading edge uh, data center uh, AI accelerator. And, you know, we were here with a lot of our partners as well. So, you know, your, your, your comment about, you know, what's special about MI300X. I mean, the, the truth is uh, we've all experienced over the last, you know, 12 months this incredible revolution, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, ChatGPT has, has really change the way we think about what tech can do. And the underlying capability of that is GPUs and you know, very, very capable GPUs. Um, you know, we made some very, very good decisions um, you know, a few years ago about how to put together this technology. And that includes um, both being very good for training, so training large models, um, but also very good for um, answering questions or inference. So when you ask you know, uh, ChatGPT a question, um, it takes sometimes a little bit of time for it to respond to an answer. Some latency. There's some latency there, and um, you know, we found uh, you know, really a great technological solution by adding you know, lots of um, high bandwidth memory or memory capacity. Uh, Which NVIDIA will not have until H200, second quarter of next year. Uh, that is correct. We are industry leaning, uh, so you know, best in class in terms of inference performance. And uh, what, what is the side by side, Lisa, on training and performance? Mi three hundred X versus H one hundred. Yeah. So if you look at, um, and we showed some of the benchmarks um, earlier today. If you look at training performance, um, we're very, very competitive. Let's call it, you know, it's it's a toss up. When you look at inference performance, uh, we're one point four to one point six times better. And you know what that means is, you know, if you're running these models, you can actually run run more models or you can run larger models um, you know, with uh, MI300. And, and right now, you know, the key to AI is GPU compute. I mean, that is absolutely what everybody says. And, and so we're here to provide lots of GPU compute. You've had the confidence to dramatically alter your, your forecast for this market, for AI accelerators. You're saying a total addressable market of 400 billion US dollars in 2027. In August, just in August, you said it was 150 billion. What has changed? Yeah, and you know, uh, really, the way we look at these things is we usually look at these things on an annual basis. And so, you know, when we were, you know, doing our plan for 2023 and beyond last year, uh, we thought that um, you know this year there would be about a 30 billion dollar market, and it would grow, you know, 50 percent um, compound annual growth rate. So, be about 150 billion in 2027, uh, which frankly was very, very large. Um, but what's changed? Is we, we can all see what's changed, right? People need more compute. They're installing more. Um, you know, the, the, the numbers for this year are probably closer to 45 billion. And when we talk to customers, when I spend time with our partners, and um, you know, what they tell us is uh, the technology requires more compute. And so we now believe the total market for this, um, it's upwards of 400 billion in 2027. It's huge. Uh, there's no one size fits all. There are going to be multiple solutions. Um, there are lots of good solutions um, out there today, but uh, we, we believe the AMD capability is uh, you know, very significant, and, and so we're excited about it. It was interesting to see on stage how MI300X manifests itself in the real world, but you'd already guided us that it will likely be the, the quickest AMD product to $1 billion. There were sections of the market in the street that said your forecast of $2 billion of sales for MI300X in 24 was conservative. If you're saying that the total addressable market by 2027 is now 400 billion, then is that two billion forecast for next year specifically for MI300X conservative as the market <laughs> thinks it is? Well, I think you have to take a step back and just look at how this technology is evolving. So, uh, you know, we did update in our last um, you know conference call to an expectation of about two billion in 2024 uh, for our data center GPUs. Um, it's a very early estimate. Um, I would say you know we have clear line of sight to that. Uh, but you know what people ask me is you know, like there's much more customer demand. Definitely. Definitely. And there's also um, you know, significantly more supply because we've had to prepare the supply chain so that we're ready to ramp.
camp. So we'll update as we go along. You know, we, we are um, you know, definitely on this path to ramp um, MI300 uh, the fastest as anything's ever ramped at, at AMD. And you know, I view this as a multi-year opportunity for us. Uh, a reminder to our Bloomberg television and radio audience worldwide, we're live with Lisa Sue, the AMD CEO here in San Jose. I mean, supply is a key question because when you say about $2 billion, about could mean less or more than $2 billion. But what is the state of supply right now? Has it improved such that actually you could exceed your expectations because you have visibility on a greater volume of GPUs to hand over to customers. Yeah, for sure. When we plan, um, we plan for success, and so our planning has um, the capability to be significantly higher than two billion. Um, we have, you know, customer demand, you know, sort of lots and lots of interest uh, for MI three hundred. And I think the key for us is, you know, one step at a time. Right? Today was a, a huge day in terms of the launch. Uh, we're actively in deployment with a number of the customers and partners. You know, Microsoft on stage or Oracle, Meta, um, our OEM partners, Dell, Lenovo, Supermicro, um, everyone is um, you know, really doing just phenomenal HPE on the MI300A side. So um, a great, great set of partners and a great partnerships um, for us to ramp as, as fast as possible. What's happening right now is you have AMD coming to the cutting edge with MI300X by adding HBM3. NVIDIA has the H100, H200's coming, they have Grasshopper Superchip, and at the same time, the hyperscalers are really aggressively investing in their own silicon. How does that work in practice? If you're trying to yeah. say, I've got the cutting edge in AI accelerators, and the hyperscalers saying, well, I also have the cutting edge in, in AI accelerators, are you competitors, are you collaborators, which is it? I, I think we are first and foremost collaborators. I mean, you know, I, what we see that's really happening is everybody realizes the foundation is the silicon compute. So of course people are going to invest in silicon. Um, now from my standpoint, um, compute is hard, and it's especially hard if you're trying to address the bleeding edge. So you know, our expectation is there will be solutions, there will be some proprietary solutions, there will be a lot of GPUs. You know, in my $400 billion TAM, I would say it's um, predominantly GPUs. And um, we work in collaboration. So there will be multiple solutions, but for the largest language models, for the most complex workloads, uh, we believe that we're extremely well positioned. Actually, a question from our Bloomberg technology audience globally when I said that you were coming on, on the show is, take that TAM for 2027, 400 billion, but tell us how much of it is, is driven by inference and how much of, is driven by training, because there's a chance that a lot of the training is complete by then. Yeah. I, I, by the way, I don't think the training will be complete by then, because I think there will be a desire to continue to get better. To you know, if you think about uh, you know what we're really looking for is you know how does AI really become um, you know as sophisticated and as capable as as humans? There's still a lot that we can do. Um, but that being the case, um, we do view that the um, the inference market will even grow faster. Uh, that will be even more queries. And so you know, if I look at 2027, I think more than half the market will. Be inference. More than half inference. Yes. Where is it right now? It's 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 predominantly training right now as people are. And, training. I, and I mean in the context specifically of demand for MI three hundred X. Yeah. So if I think about um, the market today, there's a lot of training. I think if you think about MI three hundred X and what we see in twenty twenty four, it's a good balance between training and inference. But certainly on inference, um, we just have killer performance. So a, a lot of the chatter that here in the valley is no matter how good the GPUs are, in some places is the software that comes with it and manages it is not that good. And one of the questions put to me for you is, is how much are you going to invest in software and how good do you think you are at software? Yeah, look, we've spent um, a significant amount of resources, both organically and inorganically. Um, we just acquired a couple of companies um, to augment our software resource standpoint. Uh, we think we're very well positioned. Um, today we announced our next generation, Rockham uh, 6, uh, which is really designed for Gen AI workloads. I know it's a little bit of a detail. Um, what customers are telling us is MI300 is actually really easy to use. Um, you know, we've gotten sort of the yes. heavy lifting done. Uh, we've really focused on these higher level frameworks. So, you know, people really like uh, actually building models and building um, their applications in uh, PyTorch. And, you know, PyTorch is um, an open ecosystem. It works very, very well with AMD. And so these are, you know, some of many steps. We announced this morning that uh, OpenAI Triton is also um, you know, optimizing with AMD on their next 
based revisions. Yes. So we're making a lot of progress, and for sure, um, I think on the software side, we're, we're absolutely ready. Lisa, even in the short time I've been in Silicon Valley, six years, people have said AMD won't do it. They won't. They won't beat. They won't enter the market. Intel will beat them on PC. In the context of AI, will you beat Nvidia or will you be competitive? You know. Uh, what I'd like to say is uh, we are very, very focused on our roadmap, Ed. I have to say, um, this is about um, what do we believe is important for the market and how are we shooting for um, you know, where the market is going. So yeah, I think we're going to do great in AI. I mean, I think AI is our number one priority. Hopefully that was clear today. Uh, you know, we've pivoted the company to really focus on AI. I think there are going to be multiple winners in AI. And as you know, kind of important as the cloud is, we think enterprise is really important. We we think HPC is very important. We think PCs are very important. And you know, this is kind of the, the next big wave in tech.